Welcome to the Maverick Hockey Live podcast. My name is Shane Frederick from the Puck Cato blog and at Puck Cato on Twitter. And today I'm with Minnesota State Captain Reese Molik. How are you doing today, Reese? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, we're coming into the final four of the WCHA with uh, the top four teams uh, who advanced from last weekend's first round in the WCHA playoffs in Mankato this week on Friday. Um, Minnesota State is playing uh, Lakes, uh, excuse me, they're playing uh, Northern Michigan in the first game and then Bemidji State against Lake Superior State in the second game with the winners playing on Saturday for the championship. How excited, Reese, are you about this weekend, uh, about being able to kind of host this event and, uh, you know, you know, play for uh, an, another playoff championship? You know, I think all the boys are pretty excited. This is what you grind for in the summer to get to a point like this. Uh, I think, you know, under the circumstances, it's a pretty cool thing uh, being able to host something like this, you know, played the whole year to try to get that home ice advantage, you know, get that routine that we normally are in, you know, uh, Fans are obviously aren't normal, but it's still huge, you know, getting a little bit of the home ice advantage with the fans too. So it should be a fun weekend. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. This season's been so uh, strange for everyone and and with, with COVID and starting late and having games canceled and postponed and um, some uncertainty about what the tournament was going to be up until, you know, just a few weeks ago. Um, how did you and your team handle that, do you think, uh, just in terms of having to adjust to all those changes and and everything else that goes along with it, including, you know, not having many fans in the stands and that sort of thing? Uh, you know, it it was a lot different. Uh, we usually, in the summertime, come down and train all together, and you get that bonding time, too, on the side of that, and we didn't get that. So when we first got here, trying to uh, get that bonding together, you know, get that chemistry. Uh, then throughout the year, just trying to keep a positive mindset because you didn't know week to week. Uh, I know a couple series got postponed on a Wednesday you know everyone's kind of bummed out but uh trying to keep our energy up our minds and the mental side of it you know keep going and pushing each other on a positive aspect uh trying to get better each and every day to try to get to the point that we are now how much of that did that fell on your shoulders as a captain I mean because uh, you're dealing with all of that stuff too but then you also bear some of that extra responsibility um, whether it's you the the three captains the entire senior group how, how did you guys kind of try to lead the way on that knowing that it was completely different than anything you'd ever experienced before uh you know I think we got a special Akram in there you know I think almost everyone's had a letter at some day and age, whether juniors uh, coming coming into here. So, I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a big burden, you know what I mean? Uh, everyone handled their business the way that it should be handled. Uh, you know, being the older guys, you know, we got a pretty big group of seniors, like we tried to help out if they needed it. But for the most part, everyone kind of did their thing and stayed on it. It was also a group that really had to emerge a little bit out of the spotlight from uh, the guys who graduated last year. That was such a, a, a an important uh, class and, and what you what your team accomplished last year until uh, the season was canceled uh, was really significant. But uh, for your group, uh, you had to kind of take, uh, you know, the next step, whether it's you, uh, Reggie Lutz, Jake Jaremko, Walker Dewar, Dallas Gerads, Jared Spooner, Jack McNeely, um, all players who have played significant minutes, significant roles over time, but suddenly when players leave like Mark Michaelis and Parker Toomey and uh, we could go down the whole line, Connor Mackey, suddenly it becomes your team and uh, you all have to emerge. And, and certainly uh, you guys were able to um, continue uh, the success of the program. How, how, you put a lot of pride into that as, as a group and as a, as in yourself as an individual? I mean, like you said, losing all those guys, those are big shoes to fill. And I think, you know, that also lands on the coaching staff, Tommy, uh, our trainer. Um, you know, day in, day out, as cliche as it sounds, we're here to get better each day. And, you know, it's always talked about, especially last year, was the depth, the depth. We have deep team and uh, losing all those guys going into the summer, we knew those are big shoes to fill. So I think everyone kind of put it on themselves, you know, you gotta have a good summer, come in here ready to go. Um, and I think the guys have done an unbelievable job, even the freshmen coming in, you know, especially on the D end, like I see, see it a lot with playing with Livy and then Akito back there, you know, those guys have 
done phenomenal. So it's been good to see all these guys come up and fill those shoes. For that group, for, for your group of, of seniors, uh, the, the seven players, you've accomplished something that no one else has accomplished before in the history of the WCHA, and that's to, to win four McNaughton Cups and to, to have it in all four of your seasons. Um, I know there's not a lot of time to reflect on that because you go on to the next week and then you go on to the WCHA tournament and then you have the NCAA tournament. But have you had time, uh, whether it's as a group or just yourself, to think about you know that accomplishment and what it means and, and kind of you know the fact that you know that trophy was never taken away from you in your time here? Um, you know, not not yet. I think once the season's done, we'll reflect on it and be, think uh, more about it. But, you know, once you got that done, a lot of guys in the locker room, you know, that's one of our first goals, you know. So we're like, first step is done. So it's now time to focus on uh, the next one and then hopefully get that done and focus on our other goals that we have set as well. So as of right now, we haven't really <laughs> sat, been able to sit back and think about it too much. Is there anything about the season um, and, and the run to win that regular season championship again? Is there anything about it that surprised you? I mean, I know it was different with, with COVID and, and things changed so much, but was there anything that surprised you about the way the team came together to, to win another championship? Um, you know, just the pauses and trying to get in that rhythm, especially early on, I know towards the end there was sort of a rhythm there wasn't many games postponed everything like that um you know our divisions it's it's tough you know it's big uh you know grinding a lot body play um all that kind of stuff so that's just wear and tear and that that was each because there was no out of conference play so having that all year I think that uh kind of toughens us up and hopefully that continues in the playoffs for us too Let's talk a little bit about the season that you've had. Um, you ended up being third team all WCHA. Um, you had a career high for points, I think. Um, your role has changed a little bit. I'm sure your minutes are up, I'm guessing. Um, you've gotten some power play time. Uh, there's some, you know, you've definitely, you know, kind of worked your way up uh, each year here. But is there something, you know, about this season and, and the improvements that you've made and, the role that's that's uh, fallen upon you a little bit that that's been different, or can you just describe that a little bit? Um, I mean, since day one, since I've been here, I think I learned something new every day. Uh, coaching staff pushes us, tries to teach us new things. Uh, coach coach uh, always gets on me about being a little more offensive. So I think as time goes, you know, my confidence has grown a little bit. Um, but I mean, some of that stuff too is just the group that. I'm playing with that surrounds me is phenomenal you know uh Livy has been lights out I love playing with him back there so he helps me out quite a bit too so I think you know all that stuff is mainly team stuff you know um and then just being pushed by coach too you know it's just right yeah <laughs> and you keep saying Livy that's Jake Livingstone yeah he's, uh, one of the two uh, freshman defensemen who both made all the the all rookie team the other being uh, Akito Hirose uh, both have stepped right in and certainly in um, last week uh, Dryden McKay the your goaltender and, and I talked about that a little bit how so much more seemed like it was going to fall upon Dryden because of all the turnover or half of your defensive core was going to be you know very different this year um, and it really hasn't lost a step and uh, a lot of credit has to go to uh, those freshmen coming in and a lot of credit I think has to go to to you and uh, to Jack and um, obviously Andy and, and Wyatt I mean it's been quite a group that's uh, are really taking their game up another level yeah uh, Dry Dry though he's a humble guy he's not going to take too, he's saved our bacon uh, probably too many times you know it's great having him back there but like you said Andy, Wyatt, Keto, Livy, you know, they've all stepped up big time. Um, Nail's done a phenomenal job this year, too, uh, leading the way back there as well. So, I mean, uh, it's just filling those shoes like we talked about earlier, and I think all those guys knew it coming into the season, going into the summer, uh, and you can tell the work they put in has paid off. Let's talk about your background a little bit. Um, your dad played in the NHL for eight years, uh, Doug Smolik. Um, you know, 
your two brothers, one who's playing, he'll, who'll be in town this weekend playing for Bemidji State, Will, and then your other brother Bennett's coming to MSU uh, shortly. You're all defensemen. Uh, how much of that was your your dad's influence? And no one was no one ended up being a goalie. No one ended up, ended up being a, a forward. Um, it was my, my brothers. I was a D when I was really young, and then probably around Pee Wee age, I went to forward for I want to say two or three years, and then my dad, my bantam year, grabbed me and goes, "Hey, I think you should come back to D again." <laughs> I remember at the time I was pretty mad, but now now I look back, I'm happy to that. Uh, both of my brothers played D the whole time growing up, though. So, you know, he had to talk me into playing D a little bit my bantam year, but I'm glad that he did. Was oh, that a little bit about uh, you wanting to score some goals or is it a little bit more about uh, trying to break off and do your own thing? What was that? I don't, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I was just having fun up there and, you know, D, once he put me back, I think I had more fun back there as well. So, I mean, I'm glad he did it. Uh, how much did you have you lear- learned from from your dad as far as uh, learning that position, learning to play hockey, and learning to it, you know, play the college game, which he did obviously for a couple of years before going to the NHL. I mean, he's helped out tremendously. It's always someone uh, that I can lean on. Both both my parents lean on if I need something, you know, whether it be hockey or real world scenarios, just. If I'm going through something, you know, they're always going to be there for me. Uh, for the most part, they kind of just let me be, though, um, kind of let me be my own person. And uh, he, my dad always didn't want to say too much, also didn't want to say too little. But as I keep growing and getting older, it's kind of just uh, when I need something or need advice about something, I'll reach out to him and see what he thinks or need to improve on and stuff like that. What's that like for your parents when uh, you and your, your brother are playing on, on opposite sides? Yeah, uh, you know, I think it's really stressful on them. <laughs> so I think they're pretty happy when they found out that we weren't going to be playing each other the first game on Friday. <laughs> uh, I think they're a little relieved. So yeah, I think they stress out way more than they probably should. But I, I was watching uh, the the Bemidji game uh, when you guys played up there on on online, and uh, I think they caught the camera caught uh, you and your brother getting your your picture taken standing next to each other right at the end of uh, opening warmups. I think mm-hmm. um, is it weird for you to play against him? Uh, I think you and I had a ch- chat last year uh, in, in that big series at the end of the season with the mm-hmm. with the McNaughton on the line and. Uh, I think your comment was no comment <laughs> talking yeah. about your <laughs> how much that meant as far as bragging rights go. But what is that like to to play against them? Do you do you notice it, or once the game's on, do you not notice, or how, how uh, is that? I think the first couple of times it was definitely a little different, um, but as time goes on, and you know we played them quite a bit this year too, right? Um, it just kind of goes into a normal game. Uh, you know we're still. Before the game, we're brothers. During the game, I think we both get it. We're enemies. You know, it's not. We're not going to be easy on each other. And mm-hmm. I mean, that also comes just like anything we kind of do. Even if we're playing, we used to be on the rink back home or anything like that. It's not like we were easy on each other then. And that was just practice and stuff. So now it's game time. So I mean, once the puck drops, it's completely different. I think we both, uh, after the first couple, realize or not realize, but got used to it and now it's just another game and you're both defensemen so it's not like you're necessarily yeah, true. You know, you're, <laughs> you're you're always matching up against each other out there but i suppose once in a while that could happen yeah and <laughs> that's very true that's a good point <laughs> um obviously they've had a really nice year too and um you know they'll be playing this weekend and and they've a team that's uh, beaten you guys twice as many times i mean you guys have played them how was it six times that you guys have played this mm-hmm. year? Um, so obviously they've been a, a, a tough matchup for you. Um, but let's talk about this weekend and, and the matchups coming up. Uh, you know, you're coming off a probably a more difficult than expected series against Ferris State. Um, they gave you a pretty good push, uh, I think, both nights. Um, and you know, I'm sure that I'm sure there was a lot of film to watch based on that and <laughs> discussions and areas to improve upon. I guess talk first of all talk about coming off the Ferris State series and how you're feeling right now and then we can uh, talk a little bit about Northern Michigan. Oh, uh, you know I thought they battled really hard, played really well. You know, hats off to them. Um, but at the same time, I think it was kind of a time for us to look in the mirror and go, "Hey, we need to 
tighten down some bolts, get back to our details and get back to just being us, you know? And, uh, I think our first two days of practice have gone well, trying to get back to what we're about and what we need to do to keep hopefully moving on. And I think coach has done a good job of stressing that and keeping improving on that. And, uh, you know, now we're setting our game plan for Friday. And if we follow that, hopefully, you know, it turns out well for us. And then once that's done, if we get the job done, then we turn our focus pretty quickly to Saturday. But, um, so the you, you guys will play Northern Michigan, which was uh, they had the upset win. They beat Bowling Green uh, this weekend uh, in three games and uh, got the upset on the road. So, so you'll play them as the uh, tournament gets reseeded. Um, you played them, but way, that was way back in uh, December, right? So mm-hmm. obviously a lot of things have changed since uh, you went to Marquette. Yeah, they they're uh, grew a lot as a team, I think, just watching the film, you know. Uh, it's gonna be hard. they're going to be a hard team to play against. You know, it's not – and it's a different time of year too. Playoffs is always a different beast. You know, everyone's fighting for their lives. So uh, it's going to be a hard-fought game. And and really, everyone's going to be gunning for you guys because you know, I mean, I guess nobody knows hundred percent for sure what's going to happen with the NCAA tournament. You guys appear to be in a pretty safe position. Uh, I would think Northern Michigan would have to win to get in, and I think Bemidji and Lake Superior both could be bubble teams based on just uh, you know everyone's going to be giving their all this weekend. It seems. Yeah, I mean, like you said, just with the year being as weird as it is, there's no really certainties ever so I mean it's kind of everyone playing for you know they want to play for the championship but also like you said trying to get that berth into the NCAA tournament um so I mean that just puts a whole nother perspective on it just makes it you know teams at this time of year it's not a fluke to get here you know it's Mm -hmm. teams are good everyone's good it's you know 50-50 game going into each night so you just can't have any lapses throughout the 60 minutes or however long it takes if it goes to overtime. A, a year ago, you were preparing for this weekend, and then the season ended. You were preparing for a semifinal series, actually, uh, and, and then the season came to an end. Um, does it feel almost a little strange that you're kind of crossed that line and you're into the semifinals now, considering everything that happened a year ago? Is are you, I'm sure everyone's almost always waiting for you know, that other shoe to drop. Yeah, I mean, definitely feels strange, but at the same time, I think we're all very thankful to be able to get to this point. You know, I remember we reported and we still didn't know our schedule, all that kind of stuff. So I think everyone's very thankful that we've been able to play during this time and especially to get to this point and hopefully it keeps going in the right direction and going into the rest of the playoffs. How hard was it, you know, as a group? Um, I know every season's different and, uh, uh, Coach Hastings talks about that a lot. Every, uh, every, every team, every season, you have to build your own book of business. I think he says he likes to use that term a lot, and, and because it is unique, it's your season, uh, it's your senior season, your junior season was different. Um, but with the way, with as much as you guys tried uh, and had the goals of you know trying to get to the national tournament, win a game, get to the Frozen Four, perhaps win a national championship. Um, that really seemed like all sites were kind of set that way a year ago, and that was kind of taken away. And it seems like it would be very difficult, almost human nature-wise, to kind of start all over again without that um, resolution to the to the previous season. Was it difficult um, to to kind of restart and and start all over and 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 become a new team and create a new chapter? Um. I'd say yes and no. It's always, you know, it's always difficult starting a new year, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I think the whole staff, coaching staff, everyone around has created such a high standard and culture in that locker room around the rink, you know, everywhere we kind of go that it's kind of almost expected if with a lack of a better term at this point to, you know, keep pushing and try to get back to that same place that we were at without, you know, making excuses, especially everyone that was still playing everyone's season ended the same way last year Mm -hmm. so we can't really sit back and feel sorry for ourselves it's everyone's fate was decided the same way so 
um, like I said, just the culture that they've made has made our, you know, just driven us each and every day. And I suppose at this point, when you're, it's a year later and it's all the way at the end of this season, you're, you're at a point where you're starting to think about what kind of goals are realistic for this group, right? And, and what kind of goals you have. Uh, I'm sure you don't want to get look past this weekend, but I'm sure there's a lot of excitement uh, for Sunday as well with, when you see what the seedings are going to be for the NCAA tournament and where that's going to start. And uh, I'm sure you have a goal of, you know, getting, getting the program over the hump uh, uh, in, in to win that game at the national level. Yeah, I mean, like you said, can't look too far forward, you know. So I, our main focus right now is Friday, hopefully get the job done there, and then we can focus on the next steps of our journey when the time comes. But, you know, our sights right now are just set on Northern Michigan and uh, Friday. Is, has it been strange playing um, in front of uh, pretty much empty arenas? Do you notice... Um, one thing I've noticed in the, in there is I can hear you guys a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear the, I can hear the energy that you guys are, are, are creating and, and whether you're missing that on a normal night when there's 5,000 people, um, in downtown Mankato, or it's a little extra oomph to try to create a, a buzz that's not in the stands. Um, you guys seem to certainly play with a, with a lot of energy and a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of you guys are very vocal and making a lot of noise as a team um has that always been the case or is there a little bit more of that this year trying to create your own little atmosphere in, in the rink um i think that's always a uh, goal of ours is to create positive energy on our bench keep the bench going you know keeps everyone in it uh but at the same time it is a little different playing with no fans especially at home you know our fans create a lot of energy for us and you know sometimes you can build off that energy um so like you said, right now, it's just kind of trying to keep our bench up and creating our own energy with not as many fans in the building. Yeah, not, uh, it, that, that is one of the more disappointing parts of this because it certainly, uh, as you've seen in your four seasons here, that it's a, it's a pretty raucous atmosphere at the, For sure. at, at the Mayo Clinic Health System <laughs> Event Center. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, every time I think of it now is especially uh, the WCHA championship uh, versus Bowling Green. I don't think I've ever been in a building while I was playing that was that loud. And, you know, that's credit to our fans. I think we have some of the best fans in the country. You know what I mean? They just, they always give us energy. So, I mean, trying to <laughs> not mimic that, but create our own energy to try to have that same level throughout the game is a huge part of our game. Well, hopefully the, the, the crowd that is uh, able to be in the building can, can give you a little bit of that. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you know, good vibes are coming from the people watching at home on, uh, on their TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Reese, I really appreciate your time and uh, best of luck this weekend uh, in the WCHA semifinals and, and uh, possibly the championship. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Absolutely. This has been the Maverick Hockey Live podcast. I'm Shane Frederick. Uh, check me out on on uh, the blog at puckcato.blogspot.com and on Twitter at puckcato, P-U-C-K-A-T-O. P-U-C-K-A-T-O.